Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Sayama G Master Red Eagle G438OUHSU 43 inch gaming monitor. New to the market in early 2022, this larger than life gaming monitor offers an unconventional amount of screen space at an impressive quality, letting you explore some of your favourite games in a much sharper light. Just looking at the box, you can already tell this one is going to dominate the desk space. On the outside, you'll see a good handful of promising features like adaptive sync and a max 144Hz refresh rate alongside some pleasing display specs like the 4K resolution, inbuilt speakers and some great connectivity with multiple inputs. Opening it up, you'll find all the cables and information you need to get started. There's two variations of power cable, an HDMI cable, a DisplayPort cable, a USB A to B cable, a full remote control and a handful of safety and instruction manuals. The stand is rather interesting for such a large screen as it's just a slim singular U-shaped base that screws into a fixed arm on the back. Screwing it in as tight as I can make it, it's ready to lift onto the desk. As it's quite large and weighs approximately 14 kilograms, it's kind of awkward to place on the desk, so just be careful when doing so. The display measures at around 977 millimeters wide, 621 millimeters high, and 251 millimeters deep on the stand. And as you can see, it takes up a substantial amount of space on the desk. It does have a 200 by 100 vase amount on the back if you want a wall mount, but luckily I have quite a large desk, so it does look a little impressive mounted on the stand alone. So let's take a look at the style Ayama has gone for here. It's giving off some serious TV vibes, going with the matte, slightly textured all black body with hardly any distinguishing gaming features. The back houses a little bit of style with those two cutouts on the top and bottom, with the base nicely concealing a selection of connections just underneath. The back of the stand has this convenient little cable holder for channeling all the cables neatly down the back, really aiding that minimal look. The front mainly makes the most of that super large screen size. The bezel is pretty decent, though not quite invisible, and when showing full screen games and movies, it can still give off that almost borderless look thanks to the minimal design drawing focus back to the screen. Apart from the promotional sticker telling you all of its main features, the only permanent logos are the product name on the top left corner and the little Iyama logo in the centre here just above the central LED power light and sensor. The display is quite thick when looking at it from a side profile, but it didn't seem to affect the amount of room I had on the desk and it would still look great mounted flush to the wall. Of course, it's far too large to offer a wide range of angle adjustments, but they haven't quite left you with a fixed static screen. You can adjust the tilt ever so slightly, moving it back and forth to account for your height, which is brilliant for taller users like myself. The power cable provided is perfectly long enough to reach even the most awkward outlets, measuring at about 65 inches long. Once plugged in and powered up, it turned on within seconds. Now when it comes to controls, you get two options here. On the right hand side of the display along the edge, there are five onboard control buttons with everything you need to change inputs, manage volume, turn it on and off, and navigate the OSD. They have provided you with a remote that's a little on the large side to be honest, but after all, I definitely would take this over using the onboard controls as it's much more direct when trying to reach a specific function. Getting into the connections, you get two 2.0 HDMIs, two display ports, and one headphone connector along the underside of the cutout on the back right. There's also four additional USB connections on the left along the side, with a USB-B connector just underneath to double your ability to connect more of your most used devices. Now taking a look at the display specifications, it's equipped with practically everything you need to enjoy gaming at its full potential. The monitor is a VR a matrix panel with a native 3840 by 2160 4K resolution. For gaming, it supports a max 144Hz refresh rate with an impressive 0.4 millisecond response time. You also get full FreeSync and HDR support along with some super sharp contrast ratios for a more defined picture. Taking all of this into consideration, I feel like this monitor can honestly put out a beautiful picture. I played a variety of content from movie and game trailers to a handful of story and first person shooter games and I seem to get the most out of the high quality 4K content. I had HDR and the Gamma 2 preset active throughout all the content that you see in this video. And I'm also using the DisplayPort connection to the PC. I also had max refresh rate enabled and with the majority of content I played through the Xbox PC app, I did achieve a general 
120Hz output. I found the colours to be especially vibrant in both game and high resolution video content, which was a huge relief. The HDR can be a little hit and miss at times, finding the quality to be much stronger with the PC HDR turned off and the monitor HDR enabled. The colour in some games did appear to be a little on the dull side, but this didn't really affect the gameplay, with it often coming out better in a dark room. The 4K quality really stands out here. In a dark room, I got some beautifully bright, high contrast picture quality that helped make some of my favourite high performance titles really shine to their full potential. The display does have a matte texture to it, and though I've generally found matte displays to be better at containing glare in bright rooms, I did find the glare to be a little bit of a problem more often than not. But the plus side here is the excellent viewing angle. I could sit at quite a sharp angle and still get a good view of the picture with hardly any distortion, so in my eyes, this kind of cancels out the glare issue, as I can sit at various angles to help combat it. Of course, I have to factor in the size of the display here. It's not your standard size for a PC monitor, but thanks to the 4K resolution, it does make it manageable to use on a desk with the text scaled larger than usual, and I found the video and game content generally much more refined with sharp detailed visuals. I even found it great for browsing the internet and working on multiple windows, and even using creative apps as the screen was big enough to house it all without having to compact windows down to fit the space. I wouldn't highly recommend using it up close as much as I am here, as it can cause motion sickness and general eye strain, but on the whole though, its super high quality and great connectivity makes it easy to adapt it to a TV setup for use with a console as well, or in an open office space utilising mostly wireless accessories. The OSD looks familiar to a lot of other Ayama monitors I've tried in the past. You get a small home bar with easy to translate symbols, and when selected, it opens up the larger menu for altering brightness, colour, picture modes, sound, and even turning certain features on and off. In general, I found the interface easy enough to use, and the categories all had these simple toggle switches that make it clear what features I had active and which ones were disabled. The only issue I found was the remote. As great as it is to have, it can be a little unresponsive unless pointed directly at the sensor quite close to the screen when bringing up the menu. Other than that, it seemed to have all the features I needed, like brightness and contrast sliders, and for gaming, it clearly showed all the features it had to offer, with live examples of how each feature affects the picture without having to leave the game I was playing. For the most part, I played games through the Xbox Game Pass for PC using the Display Port. Overall, I thought games played out pretty smoothly, with no real instances of ghosting or deformities that disrupted my gameplay. I loved having a larger than average display to play with. I honestly felt like I was in the game rather than just spectating a scene. I could even see more detail than before, which is great for exploring a new side to some of my old favourites, as well as finding those hidden extras to give me an advantage in those newer titles. I did try playing games with both FreeSync on and off to see how much it affected the picture, and due to the size of the screen, the effects were a bit more noticeable than with a smaller display, seeing a visible improvement in overall disturbances that I would normally see. Now as it's practically the size of a TV, I made the most of setting it over my TV stand and seeing how it works with the Xbox Series X. I know that HDMI only supports 4K at 60Hz, or 1440p at 120Hz, so it will perform a lot like a TV in that sense, but overall I thought the quality was still decent considering. The picture quality was a little hit and miss. Again, I seemed to get that dull colour and contrast output in a bright room, but playing a game like Back for Blood, I still got all the benefits of a gaming monitor, like getting that super smooth gameplay. As usual, with any new monitor, it's always worth putting it through a few basic tests before getting into gaming. I altered the brightness and gamma settings to get a good idea on the level of brightness that was on offer, and I was overall pleased with the result. Now it does claim that it can put out a max 550 nits, which is slightly above average for a monitor. I did find that it was very bright in a dark room, but it does kind of dull out slightly in a brighter space. Luckily though, I saw no glaring deformities in the IPS glow and light bleed tests, and there were zero signs of dead pixels, which is fantastic for such a large display. I was happy to see this monitor has speakers built in. There are only two 7 watt speakers, and the audio does really vary depending on placement and the content that I'm watching, but mostly it was just nice to have a direct audio without needing those external speakers. I felt the quality was not exactly high, being a little tinny when I turn up the volume, but the overall range on the volume was actually quite impressive. When I placed the monitor on the TV stand and using the PC across the room, I could hear all audio very clearly even when putting it past the 70% output. Of course, it can be a little hard to take my word for it alone, so here's a little sound recording to give you a general idea on the audio quality on offer here. 
have been like three, four years? Eight years, seven months, and six days. Give or take. My uh, tensing feelings. So overall, I found this display to sit a little higher than my first expectations. The size did seem a little too large for sitting on a desk space, but worked wonders for offering a great PC display that also worked with my console if needed. The colours and contrast when used in a dark room offered some spectacular views, putting out a sharp, vibrant display in both my favourite games and some new movie clips. The 4K shone brightest here, creating a sharp, detailed picture that complements such a large screen. So if you're planning on utilising a more open plan office space, space and want something to really show off your games or offer a more immersive experience, then this monitor might just be the one you're looking for. So what are your thoughts on this Ayama 43 inch gaming monitor? Let us know in the comments below and if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.